flood poses a significant risk to society. Millions of people are affected by floods every year. And when we look at the locations of catastrophic flood events, you can see it's a global risk that we all need to understand, quantify and mitigate. Flood is inherently a very complex peril to model. It requires high resolution, detailed inputs and high computational power. For many years, within the insurance industry, flood was treated as an unmodeled peril. Flood hazard maps, deterministic scenarios were used for underwriting purposes. Quite detailed yet smaller domain engineering models have been around for some time, but rarely get used in the insurance industry. A little over a decade ago though, we started seeing stochastic flood models in the market. Vendor companies started to produce flood models for data-rich countries where they have access to long river gauge station records, high-resolution terrain data, the latest land use land cover data, and historical records of major flood events. Over the years, with increasing demands to quantify flood risk in emerging markets, more and more flood models became available. The coverage started with individual countries, then expanded to continents, and now we have global products. If you recall the building blocks of catastrophe models, the same components are available in flood models too. You start with hazard, where you have a stochastic catalog of events, and you calculate frequency and intensity of each event at location level or model output resolution level. Vulnerability relates flood intensity to damage ratios for buildings, contents and business interruption. Flood losses are dependent on a number of building characteristics, so exposure information provides key characteristics of risk inventory to the model. And the financial model transforms damage ratios into gross and ground up loss estimates. Estimation of flood hazard involves modeling of the hydrologic cycle. There are different ways to build the hazard component for these models, either a statistical approach or a physically based approach, depending on data availability. Sources of flooding, spatial and temporal correlations, antecedent conditions play important roles in flood modeling. You really want to capture these natural processes well for a realistic representation of the entire system. When it comes to flood events, in addition to these natural processes, human interventions can change their course. Maintenance of flood defenses, operations of dams and reservoirs, navigation canals, political decisions on building structures or upgrading the existing ones are hard to simulate in a model. These add complexities and uncertainties. As more of these models became available, the need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of each became quite important. There is no perfect solution out there, but wisely choosing fit-for-purpose models and properly interpreting the results became critical for decision-making. Each product is aiming to simulate nature as is. The reality is it's impossible to do that. So along the way, you have to make assumptions. Therefore, Understanding these assumptions and the uncertainties inherent specifically to flood models will help improve your use of them and will help you make truly informed business decisions. What we are still lacking are high resolution, current global terrain data, river gate stations in many countries, complete and detailed global exposure data. Nevertheless, we've come a long way in modeling and quantifying flood risk. We have state-of-the-art models where location-level stochastic outputs are available with multi parallel correlations for different countries. However, when we talk about flood risk, we also need to talk about the many weather events that combine wind and flood damage. It is key to capture different sources of flooding, such as inland flooding, storm surge, and tropical cyclone-induced flooding to understand the big picture. The next level in flood modeling might be to extend these state-of-the-art models from individual countries to global models with combined catalogs. We also have to recognize that catastrophe models are imperfect tools for decision making. From input data to model methodologies to model assumptions, there are many sources of uncertainty. Identifying these sources and understanding them and communicating them with the users still remains a challenge. We built these models to quantify risk differentials on a year-on-year -year basis, 
using historical data in a, in a stochastic framework, assuming that we capture the current climate. Unfortunately, the current plausible pathways might create significantly different climate conditions, and our models may not quite capture near-term and long-term flood risk. Climate models are providing us a range of possibilities. We need to find ways to integrate insights from climate projections within our stochastic catastrophe models. Research confirms that, especially in extreme precipitation events, the impact of climate change on flood risk is quite material. Tail events are expected to be more frequent and more severe. Currently, our industry is exploring ways to incorporate the climate change impact into decision-making processes through stress test scenarios and running climate condition catalogs based on historical data from the recent past or based on a climate model projection for a specific emission scenario. Still, the insurance industry is at the very early stages of using climate model outputs for flood risk assessment. Academia, on the other hand, has been focusing on understanding the impacts of climate change for more than two decades now. I think that's where academic and business interaction will be a game changer. <laughs>